From Johnson City, Tennessee, it is a non-conference matchup between the Big South and the Southern Conference as the lights come up on this Tuesday night between North Carolina A&T and ETSU inside Freedom Hall in Johnson City. Welcome, folks. My name is Mike Gallagher alongside my partner, Bruce Tranbarger, today. And Bruce and our Tommy's Plumbing Impact players for ETSU, Jordan King, won the MAAC regular season championship with Siena in his freshman year. The only transfer in the first class of head coach Desmond Oliver and the transfer from Siena has not disappointed so far this year. Well, King has NBA three-point range, blow by your quickness, and a right-to-left step back, very comfortable in the mid-range. Countless times, King has converted for the Bucks in the twilight of the shot clock to salvage a possession. On the left side there next to King, you see Cameron Langley for North Carolina A&T, a familiar name around the state of North Carolina. This man got the chance to play against his brothers, Kobe and Keyshawn, earlier this year. Those two at UNC Greensboro. Cameron, perhaps the best of the bunch. Well, just like his brothers, an elite athlete, one of the top defenders in the Big South, aggressively rebounds down. In a bit of a shooting slump, he's missed his last nine from the floor, Mike. So look for Langley to try to get something easy early off of penetration. Yeah, head coach Will Jones says he's adjusting to some new teammates around him. He thinks that Cameron's going to be just fine going forward, but one for 10 from three, shooting 30% from the floor. Career lows, but he still is one of the best distributors in the country. He's been top 13 in the nation in assists every single year he's been at North Carolina A&T in a starting role. Your Atmos Energy keys to the game, Bruce. Well, for A&T, it's settle on a lineup. There's no continuity. Nine different players have started at least one game. Ten players averaging 10 or more minutes per game. For ETSU, convert quickly. That was a winning formula against Moorhead. The Bucks are running downhill after getting stops. We'll get to our starting lineups in a moment, but a little bit more on each of these teams. There you see Charlie Weber in the starting lineup today for ETSU. They're being introduced inside their home building. Seven and three are the box. Really solid win against Moorhead State on Saturday. A conference champion and NCAA tournament participant last year. They played a complete second half. Did the box put the press on and slowed the Eagles hot shooting while finding a way to survive on the interior despite major foul trouble. Offensively five and double figures in 13 threes. Head coach Desmond Oliver said he wouldn't be surprised if his team breaks the three point record in school history at some point this year. Thinks he has a ton of impressive men with impressive range from beyond the arc. As for North Carolina a and it has been a bit of a struggle in the early going. Three and eight, three single digit losses to start the year, but four of their last five losses have been by double figures and they've already lost to two SOCON teams this year. Sanford by two the day after Thanksgiving and a four point loss to UNCG the first day of the season, November 9th. They'd love to exact some SOCON revenge here tonight. In the jump circle, man with perhaps the biggest vertical in the Southern Conference, wearing number 14 for ETSU, who are in the whites tonight, Ty Brewer. Across from him, Webster Fillmore, the most efficient of all of the options for North Carolina a and And Brewer out leaps Fillmore. The box will get the first possession. Jordan King tiptoeing the half court line. Able to keep the ball in the front court. As a bounce pass, is right through the hands of Ty Brewer. Good look by Ladarius, but his brother couldn't handle it. Yeah, it was. North Carolina A&T will run a variety of defenses, gimmick defenses, presses, traps. Had a little odd front matchup zone. Turned the Bucks over, possession number one. Langley. Out to Watson. It's Marcus Watson, Cameron Langley, Tyler May, Webster Fillmore, and Dimitri Horton, the five for those in gold. Up top, this is Langley, wearing the white headband. Charlie Weber steps out, now it's gonna have to be Langley on Weber. Weber takes him inside and hitting the rim with the shot clock at one was Langley. Ball still loose and finally a foul called as Weber did a good job defending Langley who was right at the rack. And Ladarius Brewer, the one whistled with 46 seconds gone in this first half. Well, A&T got the 1-5 switch, but Weber pushes back. Langley unable to get separation. Bucks with a foul off the offensive rebound. The man that was fouled, Tyler May, at the line to try to open the scoring, and he does. May. A senior, fifth-year collegiate ball, initially signed with VCU, and much like former teammate 
Parkway Parker at Tennessee played sparingly, transferring to Southeastern Community College the next year, averaged 11 points per game before transferring to ANT three years ago. Of course, Parker, one of the players, graduated off of last year's team. As David Sloan's into the front court, it's 2 0 North Carolina ANT, not anymore. As Jordan King knocks down the first field goal for ETSU, now 1,071 consecutive games with a three for the Buccaneers. King, good job moving without the basketball into the seam of the 1 3 1. The catch and conversion from distance for Jordan King. May against Ty Brewer this time. Went southpaw, but Brewer packed it. Here come the Buccaneers the other way. David Sloan pushing pace, Euro step, dropped it off behind the back, and Ladarius Brewer with two hands goes up top for the flush. Great read by Sloan, drawing two defenders. If you're A&T, you have to stop the bounce in transition. You can't let David Sloan drive all the way to the basket. He looked kind of out of control, but what an incredible pass. Ladarius Brewer flagged down. Deflected pass down low goes off of Sloan last as Fillmore was aimed for by Langley and North Carolina A&T will keep the ball. Great job by Charlie Weber in space with the hard hedge, dropping back hard to get the deflection. Out of bounds, A&T baseline under 14 on the shot clock. Free throw line jump shot, money. Dimitri Horton, the man that knocks it down, the junior, started his career at Cape Fear Community College and has been a couple of places since before landing here at A&T. Look at that alley-oop! Oh, it's from midcourt! King to Ladarius Brewer, how did he see him? Jordan King threading the needle from 50 feet. Trying to come back the other way. Up top was Watson, but he lost the ball as he elevated. I think that the Tom Brady's Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers of the world would be impressed with that find from Jordan King. Bucks seven of the last nine. David Sloan tries to add to that and does. And the Buccaneers are hot early. Have not missed from the floor. It is 10 to four, blue and gold. Bucks just dissecting this 1-3-1 pressure. You can hear the ETSU sideline communicating. Opposite, opposite. Bucks doing it with skip passes. Underneath a little three-foot jump shot by Tyler May. Pushed it with the right hand and trims into ETSU's six-point lead. And a nice pocket pass there from Webster Fillmore. Another alley-oop, another finish from Lenarius Brewer. This time it's Sloan with the helper. And how much longer can you stay in this 1-3-1? ETSU uncontested passes from, from the wing to the rim. Long distances, too. Cameron Langley. Handed pass to May. Over to Watson. Watson drives to the baseline. Tough fadeaway from the short corner. Rattles out. And Ladarius Brewer with the rebound. Quick outlet. David Sloan to Ty Brewer. Oh! It's high flying fireworks inside Freedom Hall. Sharing the basketball. David Sloan rewarding the big guy for getting out and running. And the finish at the rim by Ty Brewer. The Brewer brothers are big time in the early going. And how about the Bucks sharing the basketball? What nice passes. Horton tried to send a pass down low. It was deflected out of bounds by Ladarius Brewer. And with 11 on the shot clock, Horton will inbound. How about this one? Sloan saw that one from a mile away. And Ty Brewer up high. Great decision by Sloan. Could have taken it himself and finished, but rewards his big guy for running the floor. And Brewer knows exactly how to end that possession. Horton with four on the shot clock. Rims one off and the rebound for Jordan King. Ty Brewer for three. That one's about four or five feet long off the top of the backboard. Rebound for Marcus Watson. Watson's going to try to go coast to coast and the reach in by David Sloan will send us to our first media timeout and send the Aggies to the line when we are back. Wow, ETSU could not ask for a better start. Three alley-oops, couple of threes, and they're up 14 to six here at Freedom Hall. take the floor, try and slow down TSU's starting five of Jordan King, David Sloan, Ty Brewer, Ladarius Brewer, and Charlie Weber, who are off to a hot shooting and also explosive upstairs 
in their start with three alley-oops, two threes. They're six and seven from the floor at the line of the timeout is Marcus Watson. And he misses the first free throw. And this is an area that North Carolina A&T has really struggled so far this year. 341st in the nation in free throw percentage, just 61%, while ETSU, number four in the nation. I'm not sure you'll find a bigger spread than that in any matchup this year. One of two goes Watson. And compounding the problem, they don't get there a lot. Opponents have been there 214 times to just 157 coming in for the Aggies. There is Brewer, another alley-oop. This one's knocked away. Good pursuit by Marcus Watson to take it out of Charlie Weber's hands. Yeah, well, Watson read the play. Arrived there just in the nick of time before Weber flushed one. Only the second turnover by the Bucks against six assists. Watson rifles a pass down low. Ty Brewer, another swat. Ball goes right to Langley. Little push shot from 15 feet, no good. And Ladarius Brewer has the ball. And you can see why he has shooting problems there. That was just pushed, no follow through. Ty Brewer in the mid range, no good. Charlie Weber battling for the board, but it ends up with Langley. Spots Horton, who misses a three, and thrown to the ground was Jordan King. Referee Jeremy Mosier looked like he was going to point to that end of the floor and say, stay here instead, with King on the floor pointed the other way. Jeremy joined by Shane Staggs and Matt Jarman today. Good block out by Jordan King. Kept the body on the larger Fillmore. First foul on North Carolina a &T. The TSU has two of them with Sloan and Ladarius Brewer. Sloan pick and pop for Charlie Weber. Ladarius Brewer came to the ball. Brewer, an errant pass that went off of a and last. The Bucks will keep the ball with six in the shot clock. a and continuing to change defenses. Pressure in the full court. This time they drop back man. Mohab Yasser, the first sub for either side. Going to replace Jordan King. And here's Colin Smith. First rise in player bio today for North Carolina a and This is his first appearance in game in right about 20 months. Former UCF forward, started his career at George Washington. Just started practicing within the last couple of weeks after transferring to A&T. Making his debut here tonight as there's one on the shot clock and Ty Brewer had no idea what the situation was and he realized right as he passed it as the shot clock was expiring what he had done. Well, lack of communication. But he has to take charge. Generally your point guard communicating to everybody, hey, this is a hot situation. Just six on the shot clock, have to get it to the rim. Just saw head coach Will Jones in his third season for a and And here a few more as an assistant as well. He's happy to have Smith back, who sets the screen, goes into the post. Instead, they reverse it to Horton. Coming out is May. May against Yasser, 18-footer, smooth. And a and is back within five. He's old school. That's his, that's his game, the mid-range, taking it to the rim. May with only one three-point field goal attempt coming in. 51% from the floor is May, and now he's got the steal. Ahead for Langley, tries to spot a teammate, now goes baseline. Works all the way out to Watson. Watson gonna drive, oh! Marcus Watson up high with the hammer. The exclamation point on the finish off the straight line drive. It all started with the defensive possession. May read the eyes, the telegraph soft bounce pass by Sloan. A&T withstood the early work from ETSU on the offensive end, and now they've got the ball back again. They're back within three and can tie it with a triple as Monty Patterson is going to check in for the Buccaneers. Ladarius Brewer out. There you see Watson. Oh, Ty Brewer went up, thought better about contesting because it seemed like he knew Watson had a head of steam and was intent on going to finish well, that. Well, Watson started to rise and just continued to rise. Five in the floor for the Aggies are May, Langley. And is dribbling Horton, Smith, as well as Watson, that man that just threw it down. Here's Smith, first offensive touch in a long time, and he'll draw the foul. 
This is a man that could shore up some of the interior issues for A&T. They have had some problems rebounding, 293rd in the country on the defensive end, 330th in the nation in rebounding margin, 282nd in rebounds per game. He averaged 10 points per game in his time at Central Florida, six boards per night, too. 6'11", 235. Well, and they changed their method of attack this possession as well. A little four out, Smith working as a single post. Prior to Smith, they've been mostly five out, empty in the post, dribble drive, a lot of ISOs, middle third ball screens. They'll change their attack with an offensive presence like Smith in the lineup. There he misses both free throws at UCF. 66% from the line in his two years there. It'll take some time, certainly, for him to work back in. You imagine he's probably at a minutes count tonight, too. David Sloan. Flips it over to Patterson. Yasser's in the corner, now gets closer. Teardrop and contested. How impressive was that for Mohab Yasser? Yeah, that's normally a low percentage shot. Not for Yasser. He's very comfortable with the teardrop runner off one foot. Momentum carrying him toward the basket. He's in position for the offensive rebound should he miss. Smith takes a bump. Misses short. Watson springy with the offensive rebound. Missed the putback. And then the ball is on the line before May was able to save it. ETSU will have possession up five. You mentioned May, there he is. Talked about his game being more old school. Just the one three-point shot, 51% from the floor, second on the team. You usually see those kind of numbers from a big man rather than a guard. Yeah, and even the bigs now you see stepping out and shooting the threes, but here's a guard that likes to take it to the rim. Speaking of threes, Ty Brewer hits one. That's good to see for the Buccaneers, just 30% from outside this year, Ty Brewer. There's a long two from Horton, who has given some space. Misses short, Mohab Yasser clears the boards. Nice catch by David Sloan on a pass. It looked like it was going to be intercepted. Sloan, floater, no. Tip was from Bonnie Patterson. Third chance for the Bucs. Ty Brewer finds the deuce. Let's get away with one. That's a dangerous outlet pass. Sloan's going to have to come back and meet that. Sometimes when you get going in transition as a guard, you start cheating a little bit. First things first, hit the single, come back and meet that pass. Bucks get a break. The lead is as big as it's been. a and was within three, and now it's seven straight for ETSU. And Watson drills a triple. And that's just a ma player making a play. Jab steps Ty Brewer back on his heels, but Brewer still in his space, able to contest with the left hand to the right-handed shooter. Watson just knocks it down. He's a former top 100 recruit. Went to Oklahoma State out of high school. As Ty Brewer is going to get closer after the fake, and he's got another two. Oh, Brewer's got nine on the day. Four of six from the floor. He was struggling a bit from the field coming in, but raising that percentage in the early going. Well, one of the two he missed was adrenaline assisted. He shot that three from 25, shot it about 30 feet. The surge of adrenaline after he knocked down or after he slammed one off the alley-oop. And now some impressive defense on Watson, but it does end in a foul. Speaking of adrenaline driven, a bit overzealous that time was Ty Brewer, and we've reached the under 12 timeout. ETSU still shooting it well. 10 of 13 from the floor. Here you see Ty Brewer with the finish at the rack. 23-14, Buccaneers. says C.D. Lamb is going to boom. To keep ESPN at the top of the fantasy sports world. He's good. What can Watson do for your business? Back inside Freedom Hall, ETSU 23, North Carolina A&T 14. The Buccaneers led by Desmond Oliver in his first season as Buccaneer head coach. There he is. On your screen, they're talking to Ty Brewer, giving him some love. Oliver said yesterday on his coach's show, the program right where he wants it to be through 10 games. Three NCAA tournaments in his six seasons at Tennessee as an assistant. Now has his eyes on getting another Tennessee school to the dance. Got to have his team defend well out of the timeout. 10.30 to go, 15 on the shot clock for ANT, who are trying to trim this nine-point lead for the Buccaneers. In the right corner, this is a drive by David Beatty getting his first action of the day. Fumbles with it, lost it. Jaden Seymour's just checked in for the Bucs. He throws it away. Now Jordan King is able to get it. And Bucks able to secure the possession because Jaden Seymour sacrifices his body, dives on the floor, doesn't mind the strawberry, grabs the basketball. 
That's not Mohab Yasser's shot. He's now three of 14 from outside in his career with the box, and a nice reverse layup by Marcus Watson. He's been their best player in the early going, eight of their 16 points. He's a good-looking athlete. I know a lot of Big South quarterbacks are very happy that he's playing power forward and not rushing them as a defensive end. 6'6", 235. You can see what the high majors liked about him out of high school. Lots of like about Jordan King, who rips the cords with that three, and the lead back up to double digits. Again, great spacing and ball movement. Jordan King stretching the defense horizontally, catches and converts to stretch the Bucks' lead to 10. May hands off to Beattie. Beattie drives against Patterson, up through contact, goes glass. Need to push back on May. Know the scouting report. Know that he's not looking to beat you from the perimeter. He's looking for a driving lane. Patterson drops it off and a steal by May. May also has Watson. Watson, another slam. This one with the right hand from the middle of the court. He's working every side of the paint right now up top. And the nice finish. Reward on the big for running the floor. Watson with two emphatic finishes. Back to a six-point game. King is with Seymour, Charles, Patterson, and Yasser. Charles lofts a pass down low. Seymour over the top of Webster Fillmore and Seymour off the glass. He fouled out in the Bucks' last game after committing just five fouls and the rest of the season, but he's back in making a positive contribution. High-low action out of the horn set. Nice pass by Cordell Charles, and Seymour knows how to finish on the block. Speaking of Charles, a little touch foul with 8.18 to go in this first half. ETSU 28, North Carolina a and 20. Horton going to come back in. Jeremy Robinson makes his first appearance as a see May. He saw that he had an athlete with him, and deferring to Watson in the open floor, always a good idea. And Watson letting the ETSU bench know about it as he walks off the floor. Inbounds pass by Kyle Duke. Duke has Beatty now. Beatty at the SoCon logo, dishes it off to Robinson. Robinson doubled briefly. Beatty going to loft to three. This is short. And Seymour with a rebound rifling right at him was able to pull it in. King. Cross-court pass, Ladarius Brewer. Jump stop in between a double team and a jump ball called. Possession arrow favoring North Carolina a and Ladarius Brewer did not like the call, but found himself in between a number of Aggies and Desmond Oliver is telling Ladarius, you gotta find the pass when you get in that deep before you get yourself in too deep. He was in the weeds and it's a turnover on ETSU. They're seventh of the day. ETSU 28, North Carolina a and 20 here at Freedom Hall. There's head coach Will Jones, third season for North Carolina a and Really, though, an odd situation. His first official full year served as interim head coach from Christmas 2019 through the end of the 2019-20 season. Then the pandemic year last season after he officially got the job. And finally, now a bit of normalcy. Hopefully, Coach Jones will be able to settle in for the Aggies, though he's done quite well in his first couple of abbreviated seasons for the Aggies. Nice up fake by B. Went to the other side of the rim and finished. Set play out of the timeout. You wondered where's Will Jones going to go for a basket with Marcus Watson getting a break following the media timeout. Nice set play off the inline cut. Beatty's got a pair of hoops. The Osser another three. This one's good. Mentioned it's not been his shot, but not deterred by some early issues outside. One for two now today for Beatty. Well, they like that matchup. They don't feel like Phil Moore can defend him in open space. Yasser doesn't elect to take it to the basket, draws draws up. Now Fillmore's gonna have to push up a little bit closer. Bucks now with five threes on seven attempts. Robinson, the lefty, out of control and a charge. Taking it, Jordan King. Good job knowing the scouting report there. Robinson's all left hand. Yasser out. David Sloan back in. Yasser five points. You see King. Goodness, he was set for a good two or three seconds, and Robinson just head down, didn't have the recognition. Made it difficult for the official not to call that. Good job supporting the drive by Jordan King. 
Charles, good off ball cut and one. Hoop harm headed to the line, Cordell Charles. Had the defender sealed. Normally don't like to see Biggs put it on the floor, but Charles bounced it to gather himself. Goes up quick and strong through the contact and one off the banking board. Call that one on Watson. That is his first, just three fouls on a &T so far. ETSU with five, so still a couple more to go for either side before it'll be automatic free throws. Charles knocks down his. And the 12 point lead is as large as it has been for the home team tonight. It's what they were favored by entering the evening. And ETSU into their diamond press, the one that caused Moorhead State so much problem Saturday. Just like landing body blows, eventually took its toll on the Eagles. Really when the game changed, it seemed like ETSU was 25-2 in points off turnovers that day. Crossover on the baseline, dish off to Fillmore, and that one was halfway down, popped out off the dish from Horton. Had an easy one at the rim, turned it into an eight-foot fadeaway that was contested. King back out to Ladarius Brewer, wearing the left sleeve, goes inside, had his pass, I believe it was, blocked by Fillmore. It could be ruled a shot, but it looked like he was trying to defer off, and here comes Beattie. Beattie tied up or a foul, and both referees agree. And Matt Jarman and Jeremy Mosier. It's a jump ball, this time the arrow favoring ETSU. Charlie Weber checking in for Jaden Seymour. Seymour, some nice minutes in relief. You see Seymour and Cordell Charles getting better every time out as their minutes are extended. Sloan, top of the key. Right wing, Ladarius Brewer up top. Cordell Charles rotates over. David Sloan turns into a three. This one misses, and Charlie Weber had the rebound in his hand. It was knocked away by Webster Fillmore, taken by Marcus Watson, and now here's Beatty. Watson, ice out against Charles. Now Langley, who's had a quiet night so far. No points, just one assist. Watson, 10 on the shot clock. Beatty, sharp crossover, misses the three. And Ladarius Brewer with one hand knocks the rebound to himself. Three on two. Here's David Sloan running the floor. Oh, it would have been a spectacular finish. Just rolled off the rim, and Langley advances into the front court. Good job by Langley in transition defense. Slow play in that. He was at a numbers disadvantage, but held the four. Horton hard off the heel with the three. And here's Jordan King. Under five minutes to go in this first half. The Buccaneers on a 6 nothing run. A&T hasn't scored more than three minutes. King, Weber's all alone up top. King doesn't see him, but took a shove on the hip, I believe, from Fillmore. That is the call. So for Fillmore, it will be his second. And some subs for both sides. Colin Smith back in. He's going to replace Fillmore. Charles, along with King out. Mohab Yasser and Ty Brewer replace those two. And Fillmore did not have to foul. King about to launch a low percentage three. Bailed out by Fillmore off the bounce. Darius Brewer slipped as he tried to pass it back to Ty Brewer. Still arrived out on the logo, David Sloan, seven on the shot clock. Bounce pass to Yasser. That one misses, and the rebound is taken by Langley. Just a disjointed possession, a lot of stickage. Watson swoops in, couldn't get the left-handed finish to go down, and the ball will be for ETSU with 3.54 to go. In the first half, we have come to our final media timeout of the opening 20 minutes. ETSU 34, North Carolina A&T has some coming back to do. They'd like to flip momentum before the half. They're down 12 here in Johnson City. Presented by City, first matchup. Not a lot of history to be had, but on history, each of these teams has a conference title affected by the pandemic. ETSU went 30 and 4 in 2019-20, won the SoCon regular and postseason crown. Couldn't compete in the NCAA tournament because there wasn't one due to the virus. Last year, 
an eight game league schedule. Still a regular season title for North Carolina A&T. In the MEAC, they went seven and one, but couldn't compete in the conference tournament because of a positive COVID test in their program. Season over, didn't even get a chance to try and go to the NCAA tournament with that auto bid out of their former conference. Very tough break for Will Jones and company. Out of the timeout, ETSU 34. North Carolina a and 22. Buccaneers trying to extend their lead with five on the shot clock. Ladarius Brewer, that's a difficult shot from about 15 feet. Does hit rim, and the Buccaneers with a second chance. Ty Brewer, fade away from the left elbow. That one rolls away, and the rebound for Marcus Watson. Great patience against the pressure and the zone. Bucks get a couple of looks, but it doesn't go down. Cameron Langley, and one! He hasn't been shooting the ball very well. Career lows from the floor in terms of field goal percentage, three-point percentage. But when you get that close and you're that much of a veteran, experienced, adept finisher at the rim, it's hard to miss. Let's keep an eye on him now that he's seen one go down as he slashes through the defense off the banking board. Opportunity for the old-fashioned three. But it's been a struggle at the three-point line for Langley as well. Only member of this North Carolina a and team to go preseason all league. Misses the free throw and the struggles continue. He's just about 50% at the line this year too. Something seems to be off with the shooting stroke, but I talked with Will Jones about that earlier today. He said he thinks it's an adjustment period as he tries to feel out how this year is gonna go, what role he'll play. Really, really flat on that release. Leads 10. Yasser over to King. Can't give him that much room and that's why. Jordan King, his third three, perfect from the floor, nine points. Just way too easy, King feeling it. Langley to Smith. Smith cross court in the corner. The lefty with the three, Milton Matthews hits the side of the backboard, but the carom ends up in the hands of Tyler May, who has an easy put away. That's why if you're an offensive player off the basketball, you continue to work, you run to the spot. You never know when one will fall in your hands. As Oliver loads of energy on the sideline, shouting out signals to his team as we hit the two minute mark here in the first half. King flips it over to Ty Brewer, who drives baseline. Too much heat on that pass for Jaden Seymour. Two on the shot clock. King tries to create contact, misses the three, no foul call, but another second chance for ETSU. Offensive rebound number three for the Buccaneers. Ty Brewer can't make good on it, and nearly a third chance, but Langley this time rips it away. Jordan King so good about making shots at the end of the possession, making difficult shots at least three times against Moorhead State. How encouraging for the Buccaneers. They're one of their last eight from the floor. Still an 11-point lead under 90 seconds to go in the first 20 minutes. That backdoor pass was knocked over to May, who has a miss on the baseline. Then a jump ball called as he got it back and was tied up on the way up. And the possession arrow favors the Aggies. And each team with fouls to give prior to the bonus. Langley going to inbound. Out goes... Matthews, who had that ugly three-point attempt from the right corner. Into May against Yasser. Yasser's got him on size. May recognizes it and passes it out to Watson. Watson going to take a right wing three. Cash. Marcus Watson has 13 points at game high. Scored at four levels today. Marcus Watson. Single-handedly keeping his team in it on the road. Jordan King dribbles down low. Ladarius Brewer cut off by Smith. And a deflection from Watson finds its way to Langley. Langley versus Ty Brewer. Drop off Watson! Three for him at that height. And a timeout called by North Carolina a and to try to make sure they can bottle this energy and electricity and take it to the locker room with 35 seconds to go in the first half. And if you're Ty Brew, if you know the situation, not a bad place to reach out and grab Langley. Number one, you're not at the bonus. Brewer with no personal fouls. A good time to burn one right there. How about Watson? We know he's big and strong. We know he's got that pedigree from Oklahoma State as a top 100 recruit out of Buford High School. Didn't play with the Cowboys. Transferred to New Mexico State where he only played in 12 of the Lobos 20 games. Averaged three points per contest, but he certainly seems to have 
found a home here, averaging in double figures this season to lead the team in scoring the redshirt sophomore. Bringing a lot of energy, comes in averaging 12 and five. Like to see him a little more active on the offensive glass with that body and that athleticism. He can be a real impact second and third chance opportunities, but getting it done on the road tonight for Coach Will Jones. How important are these last 30 seconds in this half, Bruce? Oh, this is critical. a and cut it to a two-possession game. Bucks a little stagnant on the offensive end. Like to take a little momentum into the half like they did Saturday against Moorhead. That was huge. Haven't scored in the last 2.30. Mohab Yasser is going to ISO against Watson. Over the top of him, no good, and Watson has the rebound in the corner. Nine seconds on the game clock. Watson trapped in the corner looking for Langley. He has him. Stepping into a three is Beatty. No, and Ty Brewer with the rebound. 85-foot he was deflected on the way there by Watson, and we will go to halftime. 37-31. ETSU has the lead. They led by as many as 13, but that was just two minutes and 44 seconds ago. 7 nothing run to close the first 20 minutes by the Aggies over the last 219. Zaxby's Halftime Show is ahead with the Home Trust Bank first half stats. The preseason polls presented by Food City and the First Bank and Trust upcoming schedules when we're back on ESPN+. Plus. I always knew you were an accident. Stop overpaying. Uh, I'm still mom's favorite. <laughs> Shop at the all-new Carfax.com. ETSU made 14 of their first 18 shots, but finished the half in a one for nine drought. They still do lead 37-31 over the visitors from North Carolina A&T at the break. Here in the Zaxby's Halftime Show, the Home Trust Bank first half stats. We mentioned the contrasting open to the contrasting close. Shooting the basketball for ETSU, still 56% in the first half. You can't hate that. North Carolina A&T probably feels like they're in a nice spot, having shot it at only 41% in the first half, still down only six, plus three in the glass, or ETSU plus six in assists. The Buccaneers may be a bit of a surprise considering the all-time leader in assists in the MEAC and at North Carolina A&T, Cameron Langley, is on the Aggies' side, and then you see there at the bottom, the Bucs shooting it well from outside, points in the paint, a slight edge to the Aggies. Our preseason poll is presented by Food City. You'll see the poll, and Bruce Trambarger is going to go ahead and give us the north and south breakdown in the standings. But as you look here, you have an obvious power at the top in the Big South, Winthrop, then Campbell, and those votes, again, broken down in the first place section by north and south division. Winthrop finishes, if you look on the totality of the 12 teams, with 23 first place votes. Campbell 20, a four point difference. Here's how the standings break down, Bruce. Well, in the north division, you have Campbell at seven and two, followed by Longwood at six and four, then High Point, Hampton and Radford. North Carolina, A&T rounds out the northern half. Now we turn our focus to the south division. You have UNC Asheville, ETSU Saturday opponent at six and four, and then it's Winthrop and Presbyterian, by the way, Mike, a combined 5-0 and against SoCon opponents. Gardner-Webb, South Carolina, and Charleston Southern complete your Big South, South Division standings. Talk to Will Jones. He said he doesn't think the transition from MEAC to Big South will be tough at all. He thinks that they're ready to compete right now with a couple of strong recruiting classes they brought in. As for the Southern Conference, you'll see ETSU in the top five. They're usually up around number one or two. They finish one spot below that in the coaches' poll. The media had them fifth. Wofford there is fifth here in the coaches' poll. The bottom half, UNCG, VMI, Sanford, the Citadel, Western Carolina. Chattanooga at the top is the only team better in the net rankings than ETSU. 30th right now. The Buccaneers are 90th, the only two in the Southern Conference in the top 100. Those are the preseason polls presented by Food City, also the Home Trust Bank. First half stats here at the Zaxby's Halftime Show. When we're back, the First Bank and Trust upcoming schedules, 37-31 at the break. ETSU with a six-point edge. He lays deep. Ten Cinnabon mini rolls to eat. And the pizza plus another pizza. The triple treat box, only from Pizza Hut.
ETSU has been absolutely exceptional in their home games this year at turning over opponents and converting those turnovers into points. We mentioned in the first half against Moorhead State on Saturday, 25 to two points off turnovers, the advantage. And in their four home games this year, that mark is 78 to 40. North Carolina A&T though today has turned over the Bucks nine times, turned those into 12 points. ETSU has forced just four turnovers and turn those into six points. One of the reasons that A&T is still in this game, six point deficit for the Aggies at the half as we take a look here on our Zaxby's Halftime Show at the First Bank and Trust upcoming schedules. For North Carolina A&T, what a cool next game for the Aggies. The Invesco Triple Q Legacy Classic is a showcase of HBCU schools on the hardwood. And that game for the Aggies against Howard is nationally televised on TNT. That right after the first game of the event, North Carolina Central taking on Hampton. There's going to be a slam dunk contest. Julius Irving, Dr. J will be there. Going to be a really awesome experience for the Aggies. Then a non-D1 December 21st, two weeks off over the holidays, and Big South play arrives. Their inaugural season in the league. See how they fare, starting with Presbyterian on January 5th. Then you see the next two games after that, Radford and Hampton, the first three in Big South play the inaugural season after almost 50 years in the MEAC. As for ETSU, the Bucks rounding out a stretch of four home games in five, not back in this building until the new year, the very first day of 2022, taking on Western Carolina in Southern Conference play. But before that, a nationally televised game of their own on ESPNU against Chattanooga, working in reverse chronological order. Their final of two Power Five games of the season is Georgia in eight days. Those Bulldogs will watch as the UNC Asheville Bulldogs battle with the Bucks in their next game this Saturday up the mountain just an hour or so from where we sit today. Seems like so far this season for ETSU is kind of shaping out like the non-conference last year, except maybe even better. They went down and had a tremendous tournament, the Naples Invitational. Remember, ETSU started at the Gulf Coast Showcase last year. They lost to Abilene Christian and Austin P before winning their final game there against MTSU. Played four straight games at home, losing to UAB by four, lost to UAB this year as well. Beat Gardner-Webb in two non-D1s, then went on the road and lost to Alabama before Christmas, before opening league play two days before the New Year versus WCU, who are a New Year's opponent this year. Speaking of opponents, North Carolina A&T is ETSU's now. We're back with the second half after this next time in theaters December 17th Zaxby's halftime show done and dusted here at Freedom Hall about a minute between you us and the second half between ETSU and North Carolina A&T Buccaneers with a six-point lead over the Aggies today's Bojangles trivia question ETSU home team today has scored 75 or more points how many times from the 2015-16 season to the current day. And I would be extremely impressed, Bruce Trambarger, if you were able to rain man your way into this one. The answer Get ready to be right underwhelmed, to my friend. <laughs> Rarely am I underwhelmed by your analysis on these broadcasts, so it'll be a first for me. We'll have that answer a bit later on. Bruce, ETSU 37, North Carolina A&T 31. We mentioned the points off turnover trend that ETSU has been on the first four games going the opposite way, but some hot shooting in that first half for the first 15 or so minutes was able to open up a sizable lead that's now six. Well, the Bucks dominate the stat sheet, but Marcus Watson and Tyler May making just enough plays to spark an a to spark an A&T run to cut the Buck lead to two possessions at the half. Watson and May, 23 of North Carolina A&T's 31 points so far. And you mentioned it, Mike, roll reversal. ETSU dominating the statistical category of points off turnover Saturday. a and comes in and flips the script, turning the Bucks over nine times in the first half and converting those into 12 points. Both these teams trying to blow their horn here in the second half and take a victory for North Carolina a and It would just be their second Division I win of the year. Three wins total, two of them against 91s. ETSU They'd get their eighth win in their last nine overall. Eight. Set play out of the timeout for ETSU, or I should say out of the half, and it ends up in Ty Brewer's hands. Mid-range jump shot is off, and rebound for Horton. a and straight up man-to-man. -man. Ty Brewer settles for the elbow jump shot. Watson in the paint. Backdoor cut, May has the layup, and he's into double figures with 10. Watson with the drive, draw, and dish. 
May cutting hard down the inline without the basketball. It's like the exact same play from the Buccaneers. Let's see if it ends up with Brewer again. This time Sloan going to get to the same spot Brewer was. Fires across court. Ladarius Brewer buries it. Brewer's got nine. His first three. ETSU still scorching from outside. Seven of 12 from distance. Well, and that's been the Bucks' off best offense is the skip pass. Sloan drives right, kicks it back left to a wide open Ladarius Brewer. May hangs in midair, and he is having a heck of a day. Came in today averaging 8.4 points per game. He's got 12. Well, that's what A&T does. They spread you horizontally, and they open up the lane for the straight line drive to take away your help side. Step back three this time for Ladarius Brewer on the mark. Impressive shooting from Ladarius Brewer. He's in double figures now, four straight games. And that pass went out of bounds from Watts and looked like it was intended for May. Those two not on the same page. Uh, back to the offensive set. What else can you do if you're Demetric Horton? Ty Brewer just jabs you back on your heels, right to left, step back. Bombs it from distance. Ladarius Brewer starting to see him coming around from three. Now look out when defenders have to crowd him. 11 connections from long range after just seven in his first seven games this year. This time a turnover for the Buccaneers. Cameron Langley bounce pass to Horton, who's going to push with pace and draw a foul. Don Sloan. That's his second. Yeah, a &T would like to see Horton get, get going. Just one for five in the first half. Coming off a huge game at Central Florida. Went for 17 and seven. You wondered coming in, could he get separation on the perimeter? Has that great size, utilizes that size to get his shot off on the perimeter. But can he get separation with ETSU's ability to switch those ball screens one through five? Now, Five of seven at the free throw line this year after he splits the pair, and it's a seven point deficit for the visitors to Freedom Hall tonight. Well, Darius Brewer. Look at that. Can hit it from outside, but he's a force when he gets into the paint as well. Game's coming really slow to him. Relinquished a good shot to get a better shot. His patience paid dividends. Langley, down low, Fillmore, extra pass, this is Horton, another extra pass and just not enough decisiveness from the Aggies, somebody needed to take the shot. Well they dive Fillmore into the open space, he has an easy one at the rim but passes it up. Ty Brewer, David Sloan, Jordan King. King at the left elbow, step back, thought about the 18-footer, good contest though, forced him into a pass and a turnover, Fillmore the steal. Boston Celtic weave action into the middle third ball screen, but King can't get separation. And Horton's able to put one in with King closing fast. Horton's got five, came into today averaging 11, but he's been largely contained by ETSU. A solid player, score from three levels, takes care of the basketball. Great size on the perimeter. Charlie Weber hasn't been much of a presence tonight. In fact, that his first shot, hard off the heel in North Carolina A&T the other way. Langley, those assists starting to mount. He's got three along with four rebounds. Horton looked at the rim, close out by Ladarius Brewer. Now a crossover from Horton, got Brewer in the air, smart. Demetric Horton could sense the aggressive defense by Ladarius Brewer, and when Ladarius showed that he was willing to be put in the air by Horton, Horton just was patient, smart, drew the foul, will be at the line when we are back on ESPN+. Plus. It's ETSU 45, North Carolina A&T 38 here in Johnson City. This is Tennessee. Back inside Freedom Hall, North Carolina A&T is going to try and cut into this ETSU lead. It's 45-38 Buccaneers here in their home building in a heady play by Demetri Horton on this drive left, Bruce. Shows a little leather, gets a lunging, 
gonna see a step back right here. In shows leather, gets Brewer off his feet and lunging. Now the key there as a defender, you want a good job Brewer getting out and defending in space. What you want to do is keep your feet under you. It's the lunge got him and the veteran play by Horton through contact to the line for two. Horton goes one for two. Cape Fear Community College and Independence Community College, all region player and transferred to Fort Wayne, now in his fourth school here at North Carolina A&T. Has played a lot of basketball at a lot of different levels at a lot of different places with a lot of different people. And you get to be pretty smart in the basketball court after doing all that, as you can see. Kai Brewer, jump stop, eight feet away in the right box, out to his brother, Ladarius Brewer, four feet beyond the arc. Can't get that one to drop. And on the floor for the rebound is the senior Langley finds his teammate Watson. Six point game, they can cut it to one possession with a three. Watson, power hop of his own. Now here's May. May forces the issue. What a block by Yasser. Looked like he was beaten and came out of nowhere. Now he runs the floor, deflects the pass into Ladarius Brewer's hands. Boy, he wanted to finish too. And then a throwaway by Ladarius Brewer. You got to admire Mohab Yasser. He got the goods on the defensive end. He wanted him on the offensive end too. <laughs> to reward himself for the stellar defensive effort and then getting out on the break. Yasser not known for his hops, but he's the second off the floor and times his leap perfectly off the backboard and bucks into a natural transition, but can't finish. That's a great play by Yasser. He can do a bit of everything. They're really high on his future, but the presence isn't being too difficult on him either. Oh, Watson just beat Brewer and a foul on Brewer. He was able to come back and block it to prevent the end one, but Oh, they say Ladarius Brewer. And again, it's all about spacing. Find Watson on the elbow. Gets an angle, head and shoulders around. Straight line drive, no help side. It's like a tie Brewer foul to me, but they call him Ladarius. This free throw in the air from Watson is perfect. Here you see Ladarius Brewer is right up top there, and so they say that he slapped at the arm, and hey, good call by this referee crew, Matt Jarman, Shane Staggs, Jeremy Moser, that reach in on the other of the Ladarius, or I should say the Brewer brothers, that being Ladarius. Sees Watson, cut this lead to four, and now seven for 13 at the line today are the Aggies, right about their season average, unfortunately, for Will Jones and company. TSU hasn't scored in three minutes. Oh, Jaden Seymour, the Wichita State transfer, had that one go right through his hands. Ahead for Colin Smith. Big block from behind. That was Jaden Seymour. But after the Seymour block, a foul whistled, and they do say it's on Seymour for the push. Late whistle, but it'll be Colin Smith at the line. Or no, pardon me, May. So Seymour ended up on the floor, but somehow committed the foul. All or nothing for ETSU on offensive possessions. Might have been Bonnie Patterson got that one. Yep, you are correct there, Bruce. Bonnie was the one that ended up on the floor, and Seymour then came from behind. 22 and 23, looking awful out of life, I'll tell you that. That rimmed out for May, and the struggles at the free throw line. Season long, really, for the Aggies continue, but it is a three-point game. Can ETSU bust out of this long streak? They can't, and still can't. Slow in the miss, Seymour couldn't put it back in. I'd like to see Seymour grab that with two hands and go back up strong. No reason to tip that falling away. Langley wanted to dart a pass into the corner, but it was taken away by Yasser. It's turnover number seven on A&T. Bonnie Patterson, Cordell Charles, free throw line jumper, no. Rebound, batted around, and it's Langley. Boy, ETSU, all of their last five from the floor, four turnovers in the last five minutes, a four minute scoring drought. And a good look, got it right into the teeth of the zone. And Seymour is whistled for another foul. Two and two possessions. Number five on ETSU this half. ETSU's been really good offensively when that ball's popping. Boom, 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 side to side. When it sticks, either the player or the ball, Bucks become stagnant. Only 
got nine shots up in six and a half minutes in this second half. Great position here by Robinson, and he's got the score. The lead is just one for the hosts. Some anxious energy inside Freedom Hall. They saw a great win here on Saturday. It's Moorhead State, but North Carolina a and so far, not the team that Moorhead State has proven to be in, giving the Bucks troubles. Charles with eight on the shot clock, drives in, and telegraphed really that charge. With position all the way was Colin Smith. He may not have played a lot of basketball in the last 20 months, but looks like a veteran with that play. And Charles made it easy on the officials. Smith there. Getting his mail in the paint. Charles just runs over. You want to come to a jump stop at the logo. Langley, trailing driver was May. He spots, pops, and it drops. And North Carolina A&T has their first lead since 2-0, 48 seconds into this game. And help side has to know Langley, not a threat at the rim. Don't want to overhelp if you're defending a shooter. Reaching on Langley. It's now 10 straight over the last four minutes for a &T. What do you think of that look from Langley? You can tell that he is a skilled passer. You can see why he's number one in MEAC history and assists. Yeah, when he, when he bounces into the paint, he's not looking to score. He's looking to set up teammates. May didn't let him down. Bucks looking for their first points in the last five minutes and 30 seconds. Five on the shot clock. Will it be Jordan King? No, it's taken away, but a block called. Oh, Colin Smith can't believe it. Matt Jarman came in and stopped what would have been a run out the other way. Yeah, my question is, was that ball shaken loose before the contact? Was the contact incidental? I'm sure A&T fans will see exactly why Colin Smith was upset. If you're an ETSU fan, boy, do you love that call. They'll reset with 20 on the shot clock, 12.08 to go in the second half. Cordell Charles, important kick there by Smith because Charlie Weber was in space all by himself. Would have been an easy flush for him. Still don't think the offense should get the benefit of an abbreviated reset shot clock. I think a kick's a good play by the defense. May's got the takeaway from Yasser, and the finger roll makes it a three-point lead. 12-0 run for a &T. Long, soft pass. May with a pick six and finish. 15th ETSU turnover. Yasser to Weber. They could use a hoop, and they've got it. Weber's first of the day. At an important time, ETSU finally stops the bleeding. One of the few times in the second period, ETSU attacks north and south, establishing Weber on the low block. Smith faces up, falls away, and you can tell it's been a while since he shot a jump shot in the game day. Yeah, ETSU will give him that. Yasser. Weber. And slapping at it was Robinson. He picks up the foul. It's number seven on North Carolina A&T. So Charlie Weber, after the media timeout, is going to be at the free throw line. North Carolina A&T scored 12 straight points. ETSU went six minutes without a point. It's allowed the Aggies to take a one-point lead with 11.13 to go here in the second half. As you see Jeremy Robinson with the finish, one of the baskets in that 12-point run. Then Langley trailing was May. And that 10-foot jump shot, soft, smooth, and the Aggies up by one, thanks to this May runout. They see your ugly sweaters and raise you some mittens. Let's get back to Bojangles trivia. The question was, ETSU has scored 75 or more points. How many times from the 2015-16 season until the current day? 108, that's a big number. And the significance is the next time they score 75, it will be 100 wins in that circumstance. A magic number for the Buccaneers, 75. Certainly doesn't look like 75 is attainable today with some of the recent offensive struggles, but still lots of time left. ETSU down one, out of the timeout, trying to retake the lead. 
and a foul down low. It looked like Webster Fillmore just gave a bear hug to Charlie Weber. And not a bad move if you're Will Jones. It's probably a point of emphasis during the timeout. Bucks have gone to Weber in the low block two of the last three possessions. And my apologies, I said it was the foul before the timeout number seven this half on North Carolina A&T. That was the first half. That was just number three as Yasser misses an easy one, but Weber has the tip in. Second quick bucket for Weber, and the Bucks are back ahead, 49-48. Yeah, Yasser looking for a shot blocker that wasn't there. Go ahead and take that to the rim. But Weber with a nice finish on the help side. Bump by Charles. That'll be his third foul, joining Ladarius Brewer with three. Two apiece on Sloan, Weber, and Seymour for North Carolina a &T. Three fouls on Fillmore, the only with more than two. Tell you, for a big guy, Watson gets really low. It's that torso almost parallel to the floor. Tough to stop him as a driver. Initiates the contact from Charles. He goes to the line for two. Bucks seventh foul this half. And so it will be two. Some crystal ball magic there from Bruce Trambarger. It was a one and one. Hits the first, but. I was just giving him a little Southern Conference continuation. Whatever you did, he's got both. Might want to tutor his teammates in free throw shooting. That's, that's a nice looking stroke right there. Now five of six from the line today, while everyone else is five of nine for North Carolina A&T. BTSU has only been to the line one time. They hit that free throw. Middle of the paint, Ty Brewer, aggressive take. Quick spin, jump stop. Strong off the banking board for two. Teeter Totter is on in this one. Back and forth they go. Ten minutes to go. Halfway through this second half. Watson crosses over against Ty Brewer. Nice scoop and the follow by Fillmore. Well, rarely does Ty Brewer get beaten off the dribble. But Watson able to do just that. Alternating baskets here, back and forth, as North Carolina A&T in front, and now ETSU back ahead. Short kick, four of five from outside. He's in the double figures with 12 points, and he's got four threes for the fourth time this season, going to force Will Jones into a timeout as ETSU leads 54 to 52. The Bucs were 14 of their first 18 from the floor, just eight of their last 23. But with shots like that, they'll feel that they've got a shot to take this one in the end. They're ahead by two, 9.37 to go in the second half here for Freedom Hall. I was able to see the past games in the past. I love the community. The great team players. Hero ever. Oh, Jazz. So weird. Venom. Ready PG-13 on Blu-ray and digital now. Today's broadcast is presented by Food City. Bright Ridge and City. North Carolina A&T after the timeout following the Jordan King three will try and equalize or take the lead with a bomb of their own from outside. Beatty. Into the post, doubled is Watson, who's been the main threat for North Carolina A&T today. Beattie, looks like he may be a threat from outside, but missed from distance, and here comes Ladarius Brewer. And Brewer able to support the post and recover to the shooter. Boy, great defense by Beattie without fouling. Second tip off the rim is into the hands of Smith, and Ty Brewer with a foul, 93 feet from the basket. For Brewer, that'll be foul number one. And that's a one and one. Those are the kind of plays that you have to avoid in a tight game, right, Bruce? Not a heady play that far from the basket. A little frustration on the part of Ty Brewer. He's right in front of us. Felt he took a poke in the mouth. That's a Desmond Oliver saying, too. Front end is good for Smith, who missed his first two free throws back. Let's see. Oh, goodness. He brought that elbow up. Looks like Ty Brewer and Desmond Oliver maybe had a case. And now it looks like Matt Jarvin, Shane Staggs, and Jeremy Mosier are going to go to the monitor, perhaps. Yeah, indeed. Any 
Anything you see in terms of forcible contact that could lead to a flagrant there, Bruce, on the one replay we saw? Well, I never get these right. If you're an offensive player, you, you have the right to pivot now. Is he, is he in his vertical cone? Can, is that a basketball move? That's, that's the question. Wait and see what call we get. And today has kind of gone, I think, when you look at stats, how many would have expected. Three-point line was going to be an issue for the Aggies today. 252nd in the nation in three-point percentage defense. The Bucs have made 9 of 16 from outside. And 266 in three-point percentage on the offensive end. And they're 2 of 8 from deep. But when it comes to turnovers, it's North Carolina a and that has flipped the script on ETSU. Points off turnovers for ETSU in their own building this year. 78 to 40 coming into today. Today for A&T, it's 22 to 6, plus 16 over a Buccaneer team that was plus 38 coming into today at home. And we appreciate Jeremy Mosier coming over and communicating with us. Cylinder foul on the defense as Ty Brewer entered the that vertical cone from the floor to the ceiling that Colin Smith has a, has a right to navigate. Therefore, Brewer responsible for that contact. Smith will go to the line for a second toss. And I think Will Jones is maybe a bit perturbed that after that first free throw, then they went to the monitor and looked, seemingly because Desmond Oliver was chirping at the officials. Second free throw, crisp from Smith. And we're tied at 54. Didn't look like an iced shooter. Ty Brewer with Jordan King, David Sloan, Charlie Weber, and Ladarius Brewer. Well, let's go Bucks chant rings out around Freedom Hall as Ty Brewer jab steps, drives, and walks. Turnover number 16 on ETSU. Again, that's one area I don't think that the Bucks four saw that they may struggle in, but you look at what a t does well, Coming into today, 71st in turnovers forced in the country, 80th in turnover margin. Beatty falling across the paint and missed everything with that layup chance, but the Aggies will get a second chance. Good job defending in the half court set by AT. High low action gave them some problems in the first half. Halftime adjustments. The Aggies get a stop, opportunity to take the lead. All the way into the backcourt. Beatty going to dribble ahead. Langley. You can believe he's going to try and facilitate an easy bucket here. Looking for options. Now does take it himself, and he's got the hoop. Langley's second today, averaging just five points per game. Now he's got four. Well, normally when he bounces and goes toward the rack, he's looking for a place to throw. A teammate to pass to this time goes to the rim off the banking board. Charlie Weber trying to get physical. And then it rolled off his leg after the straight up defense by Smith. Tie up at midcourt. Should be a jump ball, I imagine. And the possession arrow will favor North Carolina AT. And their bench is alive at the 757 mark. You have to love the energy by the Aggies. AT on the road. Marcus Watson and Tyler May getting it done on the offensive end defensively. Colin Smith walling up. a &T leads it by two. 7.57 to go. Delivered straight to your door. It's easy, it's delicious, and you don't have to do the dishes. Zaxby's Delivery. Order on your favorite delivery app. North Carolina a and 12-point underdogs coming into today. Up by two, they have the ball. The regional eye center game summary, Bruce. Well, a and has been the aggressor. 24 points off 17 buck turnovers, flipping the script from the Bucks game against Moorhead Saturday. And Langley maneuvers right around King. Langley starting to establish himself offensively scoring the basketball. Just put King in jail, got him on his hip, rode him all the way to the basket. Four point lead now. Big as the lead has been all day for a &T. They've got a chance to extend. 
Watson with Langley, Beatty, Smith, and May. Set play, high-low action. They get Ty Brewer a touch on the low block. Good job. Watson walling up, forcing Brewer away from the basket. Bucks 2-3 zone. May. Those two playing catch May and Beatty. Now short corner. It's Watson not looking for the shot. Five of the shot clock. Someone's going to have to shoot it. And they won't get a shot off. Turnover by Smith. Just the eighth tonight on North Carolina a &T. Telegraph pass by Ladarius Brewer. The Bucks give it right back. And Jordan King commits a foul. That's ETSU's ninth in this half. It'll be a one and one for May. And eight turnovers by Ladarius Brewer. That soft telegraph pass picked by Tyler May in space. That's double jeopardy. Live ball turnover, pick six. And Beatty will go to the line. 10 of 18 from there this year. A couple of subs going to come in at some point here for ETSU and North Carolina A&T. Beatty, the third leading scorer this year. All three leading scorers transfers. Beatty coming over from LaSalle, Horton coming in from IPFW, and Watson entering from New Mexico State. Ladarius Brewer out, David Sloan in. While Robinson's going to reappear for Smith, who I think is a bit rusty. He's shaking his head coming off the floor. I'm sure he likes the product he's putting forth, but it's been a long time since he's been in significant action as Beatty knocks that one down. Pardon me, this is May at the line, and he knocks down that second as well. So it was May that was fouled, not Beatty, pardon me. And May hits both, and now look at North Carolina A&T up by six. 6.30 to go. And a and back man to man. Feel comfortable matching up with the Bucks. Ty Brewer. Jordan King, second chance. Beatty went for the steal, didn't get it. Bucks with a numbers advantage, couldn't convert. Ty Brewer flies high. Big basket for the Bucks. Been a long time. Nice catch there by Ty Brewer. Knows how to finish. Langley, ETSU 2 3 zone. In the corner, Watson. Good ball movement all the way over to Beatty. Who cans a three? It's the duck in by Jeremy Robinson, making himself available in the seam of the defense. And an off ball foul. Whistled on the Aggies. Robinson, that's his third, joining Fillmore with three. Just the fifth in this half for North Carolina A&T. Just 19 points scored in these 14 minutes and 35 seconds and a half, two for the Buccaneers. They've really done a good job of defending without fouling. Neither team reaching the bonus in the first period. Desmond Oliver was worried that ETSU, his team, as Jordan King, looks good on that jump shot. He was worried that the Bucs would struggle with junk defenses They've been better over the last week against zone, but North Carolina a and could do some things against them on the defensive end. In the second half, that's proven to be true. Watson got all the way to the rim, but missed. Charlie Weber, the rebound, and here come the Buccaneers with Yasser. Great pass and a great finish. ETSU is within three. Yasser running the floor hard. A nice look by Jordan King. Yasser taking it strong to the rim. So good at finishing in transition. Beatty may have considered firing early in the shot clock. Instead, dished it off to Langley, but Langley gave it away. Here comes King, and Beatty commits the foul. King crashes hard into the stanchion.
King okay, reached in, shook it loose. Bucks out in transition. I'll take a look at this one. All right, Langley, usually so good with the ball. Beattie, looks like he's making a play on it. I'm not sure there's much They'll check that for excessive contact. I don't think you're going to find anything. That's a, that's a clean play. You take the ball to the rim at this level, expect a little contact. Contact was high. Shouldn't take him long, I wouldn't think. This offense early in the season for North Carolina a t scuffled, not breaking 55 their first three games. They've gotten better. And that was very quick, common foul. They've scored more than 60 in each of their last eight, but still 291st in the country in scoring offense as they're struggling with converting from the field and at the line, 306th in the country in field goal percentage, 40.5. But tonight, shooting 47% from the floor, 341st in the nation in free throw percentage, but 6% above their average on the year so far tonight. As for ETSU, this is just their second and soon to be third free throws of the evening. Jordan and King makes the first. And do the Bucks extend pressure themselves should Jordan King make toss number two. But more importantly, Mike, I'm two for two in reviews tonight. I don't know that I've gotten two correct in my career before. Stat padding, what we call that. Rare miss there from Jordan King. Just his second of the season from the free throw line. And the lead is at two, 4.13 to go. Many didn't think this would be a tight ball game at Freedom Hall. Uh, we've got a hotly contested one. Langley hounded by Sloan. Deflected pass, Charlie Weber the takeaway. Great job defending the on-ball screen and roll action. Defense rotates over, David Sloan misses the three short. Watson way up there for the rebound. Every time a and needs a play, it's Marcus Watson on either end. Sloan a foolish foul, and that's number 10 on ETSU in the second half. It'll be two free throws for North Carolina a and when we are back as they'll try to push their lead to four. Great ball game, great finish coming. North Carolina a Today's Jersey Bikes play of the game was from that man. We could pick from a number of them, Bruce, but it was the first dunk of the day for Marcus Watson. Spread the floor, straight line drive, elevate, ram it home, big fella. Tied for the team lead with 19 points today is Marcus Watson. Nine rebounds as well on the verge of a double-double. Tyler May, the other to join him with 19 points. And at the free throw line after a foul by David Sloan about 50 feet away from the rim, Cameron Langley, six points, six rebounds, five assists, doing a bit of everything today as he typically does. He's 0 for 1 from the line. 51% free throw shooter. Keep an eye on that down the stretch. Now, a little more comfortable at the line in the second half, led by Marcus Watson and Tyler May, each five of six. Langley goes two of two. Again, this team bottom 10 in the country in free throw percentage. But right now, shooting at a 70% clip for the charity stripe today. Four point lead, 335 to go. Sloan, Weber, Jordan King, Mohab Yasser, and Ty Brewer for ETSU. Don't understand the phenomena, but good players that shoot poorly from the line tend to shoot better in critical situations. Langley, no exception. Good defense by Smith to get back to Weber to prevent the three-point attempt. Seven on the shot clock. Sloan down low to Weber, who lays it in. Got the head and shoulders around. Drew Smith felt his presence. Nice behind-the-back bounce pass into Charlie Weber's pocket with a catch and conversion in the lane. First ever matchup between these two. I take seeing this game every day. It's been a great one so far. Who's got the final blow? We've got it in Watson's hands with three on the shot clock. 30 footer, no. And the rebound for David Sloan. AT unable to get separation with the ball screens on the perimeter. ETSU switching everything one through five. Sloan. 
Charlie Weber can shoot that shot. Misses off the heel. Yasser flies in for the rebound and the putback. Just outworks you on the offensive glass. Mohab Yasser wanted it more than the other nine guys out there. Now five games in a row for Mohab Yasser with eight points or more. He's not taken long to adjust to the collegiate level. We are tied at 65 and a timeout by Will Jones. Boy, Colin Smith gave Charlie Weber all kinds of room. Weber is a good shooter. And Yasser, he can see him stride that one out. This game was actually supposed to take place, Bruce, one year ago tomorrow. But in the weird year it was, that was a week where the Bucs had three or four different opponents scheduled or near scheduled for one specific date. They ended up having to bump that date back, couldn't schedule two or three teams, including North Carolina a and So 364 days later, here we are, and dare I say it was worth the wait. It was, it's been a good one, every bit worth the wait. You kind of felt early, ETSU gonna blow the doors off a and but credit Will Jones and his bunch. Coming in here, hanging tough, giving ETSU all they wanted. Kind of, kind of surprised you felt ETSU establishing an I- identity, very comfortable in this style of play, controlling tempo against Moorhead State by pressuring the basketball and playing fast on offense. But A&T coming in here tonight, matching the Bucks blow for blow. Should be noted in tight games this year, ETSU. Game separated by five or less. A loss to Appalachian State, a win over Missouri State. For North Carolina A&T lost two early by four or less. And a third against Sanford. They are 0-3 in games separated by five or less. And again, if it comes down to free throws, ETSU number four in the country at 81%. North Carolina A&T number 341. And about 20 percentage points lower. Langley out of the timeout. Good look for Beattie. And King on the baseline with the rebound. Run Beatty off some elevator action. Got the clean look. Can't get it to go down from the key. Sloan. Navigates down low. Dishes it off for Weber. And he got it. And Charlie Weber is gets laid on in this game. Didn't have any points until the last seven or eight minutes. He's now got eight. Establishing a presence in the half court set. ETSU so much better when they work the ball to the low post. Beattie out to Langley. He's not a shooter. So he's gonna go down low with the left hand. Spins it in. What a finish. Straight line drive. Jumped as far horizontally as he did vertically, just hung in the air off the banking board with the offhand. Had to spin that one a little bit as his momentum was carrying him away. Slow now, can the Bucks respond? Oh goodness, what was that? A loose ball somehow finds its way to Yasser. Sloan got caught between a pass and a shot. Six on the shot clock. Yasser against Smith. Misses the three short and the rebound for Beatty who throws it away. May wasn't looking for the ball. The Buccaneers are going to use a timeout. 32nd called by Desmond Oliver. Oh, what a missed opportunity here by A&T. May is looking right at Beattie, but wasn't ready for the pass. No, well, the spacing wasn't there. May's expecting Beattie to take off. May's getting ready to get out and fill the lane. Big break for ETSU, because. A&T with numbers off that long rebound, off the long miss. This has been a team under Will Jones after a bad year under Jay Joyner in Joyner's first year with Jones as an assistant. They went 3-29, and 1-15 in the MEAC. Over the last four years, went 36-12 and 12 in MEAC play. Have not, however, had a winning non-conference season since 2012-13 when they tied their most wins since 1987-88 overall, going 20 and 17, not off to a good start this year either, but they really feel like once they get Colin Smith worked back in and and also are able to add Duncan Powell, a ESPN top 100 recruit that hasn't played yet for them. They took from Arkansas. But they're gonna be on the right track. They've shown improvement even here tonight, but the game's still in doubt. 
Jordan King for ETSU with David Sloan, Mohab Yasser, Charlie Weber, and Ty Brewer. Here's Yasser on the baseline, pass to King. He's a sharp shooter, missed though. And the rebound for Watson. Wow, you couldn't ask for a better luck. And that's a shot King has made time and time again. Pump fake, bounced himself into rhythm. Got the clean look, but couldn't, couldn't knock it down. A&T gets the stop, 27 and a half on the game clock, 25 on the shot clock. Great find by Yasser and the patience by King. You thought surely this was going down. King with 15 points tonight, leading the Buccaneers four of six from outside. Broke out of a mini shooting slump Saturday by going seven for 13 from the floor, hitting four threes as he has here tonight, averaging 11 points per game. He's definitely one of the ones that you would want taking that shot. But with the miss, you mentioned the two and a half second difference between the shot and game clock. North Carolina a and out of timeouts. TSU does have a couple. And keep in mind a couple of things here. If they force the issue, try to get to the line, they are in the double bonus, but are not good free throw shooters, bottom 10 in the country. And if they elect to run it down into single digits, they have the luxury of sending five to the offensive glass. If you go with three or four on the game clock, no reason to balance the floor. Langley's going to milk all of the clock that he can. One of the best passers in the country. Can he drop a dime here? Oh, he does. May has the two. 7.2 to go. North Carolina a and on top. The Bucks backs against the wall and a timeout for Desmond Oliver. That is Cameron Langley at his best. Set play, we see the baseline cut. Timed perfectly. Drops it off for Tyler May and to finish off the banking board, a and plus two. Wow, totally lost was Jordan King. And then May, how about Going right up against Mohab Yasser, perhaps ETSU's strongest player, at least inch for inch, may have hung right in there. And you ask, where's the help? Well, that's on the plus side for A&T. They do such a good job of spreading the floor. Mohab Yasser read the play just a split second late getting there. Langley's that pass right on the money. May with a quick conversion after the catch. Where do you go now if you're ETSU? 7.2 to go, down by two. Firstly, you go for the tie or the lead. Secondly, Ladarius Brewer has not been in the game extensively here down the stretch. Some bad turnovers, eight of them total, but does have 14 points. If he's not in there, who's the option? Well, at, at this point, you're, I don't think you're thinking two or three or who. It's just a matter of getting the ball up the floor, getting quick and aggressive. If three's there, you certainly take it, but I think you have to go to the rim first and draw the defense. If something's available on the perimeter, kick it back out and go for the, and go for the win. But I like driving it to contact. Again, you don't worry about balancing the floor at this point. If you go early, send all five to the offensive glass. No Ladarius Brewer. It's David Sloan, Jordan King, Mohab Yasser, Charlie Weber, and Ty Brewer. The Bucks inbounding 94 feet away from where they need to be. Pass into Weber. Now back to Sloan. Four seconds and a timeout from Desmond Oliver. And the Buccaneers, 3.9 on the clock now, so they will get it in the front court. And your A&T, you've been multiple on defense all night. Opportunity to, to disguise a lot of looks. Guard the basketball, you can deny the inbounds pass, you can man, you can zone, you can run and jump. For ETSU, most important part of this play right here is the pitch and catch. You have to make sure the entry is clean. An interesting substitution, we're gonna see Harry Maurice for the first time, big seven footer. A lot of size in the lineup. Bet they might put him on the throw. In your own building, does it change what you do? The two or the three, or are you just looking for the best shot? It has to be best shot, something quick, something, something aggressive at this point. 
Mohab Yasser is going to be the inbounder. ETSU with Weber, Sloan, King, and Ty Brewer. What has Desmond Oliver drawn up now? 4.4 on the game clock. Well, he's going to have to throw it over the seven footer. Maurice, look for a screen away from the basketball. Officials are hesitant about calling some, something off the ball, an off ball screen. So you can be very aggressive with screening action. Ty Brewer in the post. Two seconds. Brewer the fadeaway. No! And that follow will not count. Matt Jarman waves it away, and North Carolina A&T has pulled the upset on the road. Ty Brewer, not a great jump shooter, and falling away on the baseline at just 32% from the field on the year, a team low. Couldn't get that one to drop. And a bit of a shocker for ETSU who are coming off a big win over Moorhead State. For A&T, 21 points from Tyler May, a game high. 19 from Marcus Watson who really kept the Aggies in this game early on. The biggest play of the game though, was Cameron Langley, a beautiful bounce pass, back door cut by May. May, a strong finish on the wraparound other side of the rim to give the Aggies a 69-67 lead. And that was the final, despite shooting just three of 13 from outside, being minus two on the glass. And seeing ETSU drain nine threes, 18 Buccaneer turnovers turned into 26 North Carolina A&T points, while ETSU forced A&T into just 11 turnovers to 7 ETSU points. Your True Shine Car Wash player of the game, Bruce. Uh, Marcus Watson, 6 out of 11 from the field, leading to 19 points, 9 rebounds, couple of highlight reel slam dunks. A lot of energy for the athletic forward, Marcus Watson. How big of a win for North Carolina A&T on the road? Oh, that's huge, especially with a break coming up. And the fact that they played through adversity, got off to such a slow start. ETSU is just a dunk-a-thon the first few possessions. And Chris passing, Bucks open up an early 12-point lead. A&T just keeps fighting back, fighting back, fighting back. Nice win for Will Jones' group going into Big South action. More than six minutes without a point for ETSU in the second half allowed North Carolina A&T to get back in the game after trailing by double digits. And the Aggies fought till the end, got the game-winning basket with seven seconds left, and they improved to 4-8 and eight on the year. ETSU drops to 7-4, and four, just their second loss in the last nine contests. North Carolina A&T 69, ETSU 67. For Bruce Tranbarger, my partner Patrick Ball, Stephen May, and their crew, my name is Mike Gallagher. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. A great ball game at Freedom Hall. A&T comes into Johnson City and steals a win from the Buccaneers. This has been a production of ESPN.